In mathematics, a fractal is a curve or geometric shape, each part of which has the statistical character of the whole. Fractals don't just exist theoretically, their qualities are exhibited in natural phenomena, from microscopic snowflakes to galaxies. And, believe it or not, fractals can even be found in the music of Carla Bley. Sort of. This is Score Study with me, Brian Crock. If you're just meeting me, on this channel, I take you on a deep dive inside the scores of some of the greatest music of all time. Today, I'm looking at Jesus Maria from the ingenious, mischievous mind of Carla Bley. The first James Joyce's masterpiece, Finnegan's Wake. Okay, just stick with me here. I promise this is related. Full disclosure, I'm obsessed with James Joyce. I'm up here on the roof of the Martello Tower where Joyce would sunbathe. So yeah, Finnegan's Wake is a masterpiece. Joyce scholars have long used the mathematical term fractal to metaphorically describe the phenomena of patterns that appear in the book which are scalable. The most obvious example being that the very first sentence contains all the representative ideas that appear throughout the entire duration of the book. Might as well show you my copy of the book. There's that first sentence. River Run Past Eve and Adams, from swerve of shore to bend of bay, brings us by a commodious vicus of recirculation back to Half Castle and environs. Now, that may sound like nonsense, but it's actually one of the great sentences in literature. We can say that it is a fractal of the entire book, because within its 27 words, Joyce introduces all of the thematic material that constitute its narrative structure. These include time, process, the rise and fall of man, authors Giordano Bruno and Giambattista Vico, and importantly, believe it or not, urine. Interestingly enough, in 2016, scientists at the Institute of Nuclear Physics in Poland proved that Finnegan's Wake was more than metaphorically fractal. The results of our analysis of this text are virtually indistinguishable from ideal, purely mathematical multifractals, said Professor Stanislaw D, I'm going to call him because I have no idea how to pronounce that, an author of the paper Quantifying Origin and Character of Long-Range Correlations in Narrative Texts. Catchy title, guys. He goes on to say, Studying characteristics of the sentence-length variability in a large corpus of world-famous literary texts shows that an appealing and aesthetic optimum involves self-similar, cascade-like alternations of various lengths of sentences. Especially spectacular in this respect are hypertext-like stream-of-consciousness novels. Evidently, they, like Joyce, had a kind of intuition, as it happens to great artists, that such a narrative mode best reflects how nature works, and they properly encoded this into their texts. Basically, he's saying that whether Joyce intended to or not, he subconsciously utilized his artistic intuition to create fractal structures in his work. In the same sense, Carla Bley's Jesus Maria, a true masterclass of economy and classical structure, can be said to exhibit fractal properties. In this video, I'm going to show you how, like Joyce accomplished in Finnegan's Wake, Carla Bley imbued the statistical character of the entire structure of the song into its first measure of music. Background. In 1936, Lavella May Borg was born. Borg's father was an organist and a choir master at a non-denominational church, and Protestant hymns made a permanent imprint on her musical imagination. But Borg left the church, dropped out of high school, and moved to New York City at the age of 18, sleeping at Grand Central Station and eventually taking a job at Birdland Jazz Club as Cigarette Girl. Through her job at Birdland, she met her future collaborator and husband, pianist Paul Blay. Blay recorded her first composition and also introduced her to his circle of insanely gifted musical peers, many of whom would record her early compositions. In 1961, Blay wrote many great pieces of music for Jufri, which he recorded on his albums Fusion and Thesis. Amongst the tunes that Jufri recorded, Jesus Maria would go on to be one of Blay's most recorded compositions. In 1966, Blay was hired to write piano arrangements for a book of Christmas carols called A Wealth of Carols. Perhaps because of its vaguely religious title, Blay threw Jesus Maria into this collection, making this 
at age 30 and with a large catalog of recorded compositions already in her resume, her first piece published in sheet music form. She made the occasion even more special by writing lyrics to the song. So let's talk about the title. Blay made it explicitly clear to me by sending me her handwritten lyrics that the pronunciation is Hey Zeus because she spelled it H-A-Y S-O-O-S. Anyways, after unsuccessfully searching their labyrinthine website for the lyrics, which by the way, check out wattextrawatt.com. It's one of the coolest and weirdest corners of the internet that I've found. I eventually texted my friend Ethan Iverson, a well-known authority on jazz history, to ask if he knew where I could find them. Through him, I was put in touch with Steve Swallow, who, by the way, should have the Guinness Book World Record for kindest email etiquette. This guy is just an absolute pleasure to interact with on the internet. After looking through their records, Swallow was also unable to unearth these lyrics. But luckily, and amazingly, Blay had them in her memory, almost 60 years after she wrote them. So with their blessing, I'm going to share those lyrics with you now. of this composition stunned me. At first, I just wanted to make a video about how much I liked this song to answer the simple question, why is this song so perfect? Conveniently, Jesus Maria also happens to encapsulate so many of the defining characteristics of Blay's entire compositional approach. Outright references to Americana and religion, broken elements, and, as evidenced by the lyrics, a wry sense of humor. But as I was studying it, I became convinced that it also exhibits fractal-like qualities. It's hard to know how much of the fractal structure for Jesus Maria comes from Carla's conscious design, or rather just from her artistic intuition. But in a way, that simply doesn't matter, because the evidence is all there for us to observe. This is what musical analysis is all about. I say the structure is like a fractal, because each scalable part contains the statistical character of the whole. In other words, the general structure of the entire composition is mirrored exactly by the four bar phrases of the melody and also by the very first measure alone. Let me explain. Measure one of Jesus Maria is jaw-droppingly, awe-inspiringly perfect. It simultaneously introduces the two fundamental problems that are worked out throughout the rest of the composition. We hear a fairly standard-seeming oom-pa gesture in the key of C major. 
This march-like figure is an inherent feature of much of Blaze's music, reappearing again and again throughout her oeuvre. Yes, I said oeuvre. What are you going to do about it? This convenient rhetorical device, that is, referencing a generic, familiar, historical oompa figure, immediately sets up the listener's expectations to hear a one chord, followed by a 5-7 chord, back to a one chord. Blay immediately subverts our expectations by stretching the dominant seventh from F natural up to an F sharp. This creates a tension that we will simply have to live with throughout the entire duration of the piece, desperately wishing for resolution, but never getting it. Meanwhile, Steve Swallow's bass figure establishes yet another rhetorical problem that is then worked out within the music. I'm gonna call this the almost but not quite an octave problem. We immediately notice the ascent upward from G to the G an octave higher, played as a harmonic on Swallow's electric bass. This is another instance of subverting our expectations because we've heard this figure with a downward ascent over and over again throughout the history of music. Going up instead of down is an elegant way to draw attention to the octave. Blay has said, My style started with a broken toy bought in Chinatown when I was about eight years old. It was a musical toy, but it was broken. These broken elements and mistakes pervade Blay's catalog throughout her career. In particular, this arrangement of Jesus Maria that I transcribed comes from her 1969 record, Musique Mécanique in which broken machinery seems to be an overarching theme. Well, in Jesus Maria, Blaze's piano part plays the role of that broken toy. On beat two, she plays a B natural, a major seventh above Swallow's C, followed by that pesky F sharp on beat four, another major seventh above Swallow's G. Now, that F sharp is also a minor ninth above the phantom, unheard F natural that our ears are expecting to hear, part of that G dominant seventh chord. This is felt, although not heard, as a tension, almost but not quite an octave. If we zoom out from measure one to the four measure phrase beginning at measure five, we'll notice each of these musical tensions again, but on a larger scale. Fractals, people, come on, get with me. The melody that we hear sounds so familiar so inevitable that it's hard to believe that nobody wrote it before Carla Blay. It has a perfect classical phrase structure, A, A, B. Cedric Thorpe Davey says in his book, Musical Structure and Design, the phrase is the musical counterpoint of a literary clause. So while Joyce was creating fractals with literary phrases, Carla's creating fractals with her musical phrases. Notice how the range of this melodic fragment fills out an octave, again, from G down to G. This is further highlighted by the fact that the tenor saxophone and electric bass meet in unison on the final G of the phrase, as if to say, hey, notice me. We then hear trombonist Roswell Rudd introduce a new idea into the fold, which again sounds inevitable, but has a weirdness to it which is hard to pin down. The weirdness comes from the fact that Rudd's line includes F naturals rather than F sharps, almost as if he didn't get the memo that, hey, we're doing more of a Lydian thing in this piece. His F natural in measure seven creates a minor ninth dissonance with the F sharp in the piano. Again, almost, but not quite an octave. In measure nine, Blay repeats the two A fragments, but surprises us listeners in measure 11 by transposing the B fragment up a major third. Notice how Swallow's bass line expands outwards, down a minor second to B and also up a minor second to G sharp. All this resolves before the bridge to E major, a relatively distant key from C major. The bridge is another oompa figure from E7 down to B7. Gary Window's tenor saxophone line climbs up to C natural, which would complete the octave if the key hadn't changed so abruptly. 
Again, it's as if the piece were broken in some way. This high C forms a minor ninth with the low B in the tuba and bass. The phrase structure of the bridge is again A, A, B, and again creates an outline of an octave, from the C in measure 14 down to C an octave lower in measure 17. Notice how the melodic fragments are now twice as long as they were during the A section of the melody. Just like a fractal, as we zoom out, we see the same patterns recurring, only at a grander scale. Just for grins, let's see what happens if we zoom out again. We observe the structure of the entire melody, A, A, B, and then a recapitulation. And it is at this moment in Jesus Maria that Blay is able to solve the problems that have been at work for 30 measures. This time, when we hear the pickups to what we expect to be another bridge, the melody ends on a high B, the major seventh in the home key, almost but not quite an octave. This is further dramatized by the drastic rubato that occurs at this moment. It really feels like the ensemble is working hard at the Sisyphean effort to somehow reach a conclusion. As if to try again, the tenor saxophone again plays the fanfare-like melodic fragment. And just like before the bridge, the melody makes it up a half step higher to C. At this very moment, in measure 33, the tuba and left hand of the piano play low C, finally completing the octave for which we've been subconsciously yearning all along. And finally, with an even more drastic rubato, the quarter note equals about 33 beats per minute, a snail's pace. The trombone plays its expected answer. With no F sharp to ruin the proceedings, we finally achieve that 5-7 that was set up in measure one. The piano works down an octave again to its lowest C, putting a perfect button on the whole proceedings. Thus, I would summarize the entire form as one long cadence from the one chord, C major, to the 5-7. G dominant seven, and back to one. We start from C, entropy is introduced, and we work our way through this almost but not quite an octave tension to a well-earned resolution at the end of the piece. The macro form and every element contained within it is perfectly encapsulated by the elements of measure one and also by the elements of measure five to eight and also measures five to 29. Whether Carla Bley intended to or not, Jesus Maria is like Joyce's Finnegan's Wake or like a snowflake or like the entire universe, a complex multifractal. Thank you for watching everybody. Please, if you liked this video, subscribe to my budding YouTube channel. Oh, and by the way, my big band, Big Heart Machine, has a new record out this week called Live at the Jazz Gallery. If you dig Carla Blay, I think you'll dig our album. So check out the links below, buy it on Bandcamp if you wanna be an absolute mensch. Thank you again to my friends, Adam Neely, Jay Sawyer, Nick Grinder, and John Lake for lending me their incredible musical talents. And thank you to Steve Swallow and Carla Blay for the simple act of emailing back and forth with me. You absolutely made my quarantine worthwhile. Also, if you're the type of person that needs to dive in deeper to this stuff, come over and hang out with me on Patreon. For a small monthly fee, I'm giving my patrons everything. Behind the scenes footage, unreleased tracks from my records, play along tracks, musical exercises. The score for Jesus Maria that I transcribed is gonna be up there. The scores for all my videos, you get the idea.